So I am really, really happy to be back with my friends Bryce and Medina today and David will be joining us, but it's five o'clock in the morning where he is. So as soon as he gets up and switches his computer on, <laughs> poor David will be joining us. So how are you doing, ladies? How are you doing, Medina? Oh, excellent. Really, really good. Um, got rid of a big uh, issue last week that was hanging over, which is uh, sort of the dark energy is trying to come in and um suppress my voice so that that's gone yay <laughs> yay and um so other you know wonderful things that are happening i want to talk about today are the 222 portal that we're going through today in australia it's the second the second no to uh 22 so this is huge and and so i'm feeling the energies of that and that that's um very positive australia this Here's David. Yeah. Sorry, we'll oh. just let David come and join us because now he's excellent. Hi, David. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi, David. We just started, if that's all right. Yeah, that's cool. We just started a few minutes ago, but you haven't missed anything much at all. Oh, well, far, before we dive into that, Medina, we'll just introduce, see how the others are getting on. And then we've got lots of topics to discuss today. That will definitely be on the list. How anyway, well done, David. Sterling effort, five o'clock in the morning. I'm impressed. <laughs> are you OK? Yeah, yeah, good. Good, good, good. Really, David, every time I film with Tamara, it's usually 5 a.m. my time. But I'm used to getting up super early. But that is definitely... Good job. <laughs> Definitely, it's it's hard yeah. to do that. So, good morning. <laughs> so, yeah, good morning. Good morning to, to all of you. Oh, good, good morning, everyone. And good morning, good evening. And here it's nine o'clock at night. Here it's very dark. We've already had lots of orbs flying around, haven't we, Bryce? So, yes. well, we've got some really exciting <laughs> things to talk about today. So we'll we'll each sort of go around the table and kick it off because I know you've got some good things to chat about as well David and Bryce but Medina you were just talking about the portal do you want to tell us a bit about that because in Australia you're already on the second of the second 22. Exactly yes yes so this is huge it's a huge uh, energy that's coming in for an opening of the Aquarian gateway and these frequencies of light will assist in accelerating humanity's awakening process so this is huge um, and the 222 number is the number that pulsates the impetus of the power on all planes and the ability to change the course of history yay so this is uh, an energy that's going to shift us in in a direction that we're, we're co-creating so really it's so important to stay focused on the light and to hold um, love-based patterns that we want to co-create because this is a huge energy for co-creating what we want to bring in. Um, so on the 2nd of uh, the February, this is the beginning of this gateway and it will amplify um, that 222 number 1000 fold because it's five times two. But then what happens is the gateway continues to the 22nd of the second and then it will be six twos so the amplification of those six twos will mean that it is um, amplified 10,000 fold, that 222 number. A again, you can imagine the, um, the frequency or the energy of that frequency um, in, the, in our field. And, and that's a very powerful co-creation, obviously. Um, and that 22nd will complete the passageway through that Aquarian gateway. So th this is a very powerful time for co-creation of the of the um, planet that we all want to create. And on top of that, the 222 lunar year, which many people celebrate is the year of the tiger symbolizing rebirth and reinvigoration. So it's it's a very exciting time when you look at it that way. And I think the, the, the way that we see the world at the moment, you know, that obviously at this 3D matrix level, you know, it's looking very uh, complicated at times. It can look very, um, you know, challenging and dark but when when you bring all these aspects into it i think it's really important to to realize that there's a lot of higher things going on that are in play that are actually supporting us to co-create the reality that we want so that fits in so well with what you and i were talking about when we were having our pre-record chat bryce doesn't it because we both we were both saying um david and medina that bryce and i were talking about that we're really sort of personally for us two we've we've got to the end of the sort of 
um, talking about they've done this to us, we've been programmed, we've been this, and very much moving through the grief cycle into the acceptance stage of, okay, that's where we're at, that we've been, now what are we going to do about it? So that fits perfectly with that energy, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And I think we forget that these other things are going on as well. These higher metaphysical things are in play that are really supporting us. Because if we focus too much on that 3D, um, it does look like we've got, you know, a lot against us sometimes. So, yeah. I noticed about that. Oh, carry on, Bryce. No, I was about to say, I've noticed that my viewers have noticed that like orbs are constantly going around me now. I've seen it on Catherine's videos. I've seen it, like you can see it, that that metaphysical starting to come into more of a reality where the veil is is dropping because we are going from a third density, which is a, the physical density. I'm not talking about the consciousness at this point. I'm talking about that's a heavy density to be in. And now we're going up to fourth density. And so it's going to get lighter and it's going to be a little bit more um, clearer to see beyond the veil. And, um, and, and one thing that's exciting for me moving past, cause there is, I mean, Catherine and I were talking about this. There is a grieving process you go, go through when you're awakening. There's always a black pill that goes with the red pill, but I'm tired of the grieving process. I want to, I want to move into that new reality because the metaphysical, the spiritual that I've been experiencing, I've always had spiritual stuff happening to me since I was a kid, but as of late, the intensification of that, it's like, that's more real to me now than the. BS that we've been living that I've been living through for the past 38 years that's mm -hmm. more real now and it feels mm -hmm. better it feels more loving it feels more um exciting it feels like we're like more purposeful and and that's what I want to focus on now is like yeah that story they gave us it was crap but guess what the real story is really cool and it's awesome and and we're a part of it we're a part of that so what do you think David uh i i just know that like it's a it's a bit of a challenging one because you do see a lot in the 3d that's happening right now i mean in terms of in terms of stuff that's happening here uh, medina's probably seen a lot of it as well maybe you guys have too so many people are being served with no like the police are being served and the politicians are being served and it's really great and there's loads of people descending on parliament house in canberra and that's happening all of this week and it's been happening you know, a few days from the from a spiritual perspective, though, um, I I kind of I can tell that people are waking up rapidly. I can tell that so many things. You know, you know how the, in the Matrix, Cipher wants to go back to sleep, and there are many people like that too. But there's definitely a big awakening happening in in on so many levels. But but it, like it like you guys said, it's now time for action. Like it really is time for action because we can't really keep playing victim the entire time uh, and saying that this has been happening, this has been happening, because there's a lot happening. And our our uh, our supply chain is literally hanging by a thread here. Mm. Like I heard something something crazy last night. I don't know if it's true, but I could see I could see how it would be true. By this trucking company who this guy who's been works with one of the major tr trucking companies, he he was like, by the end of this week or early next week, we will have no trucks bringing any food into the state at all. And and uh that you know that really concerned me and uh, so it, i i just i just <laughs> hope there's some sort of divine intervention that's gonna it's gonna come in i mean I, i'm prepared a little bit could always be more prepared for sure but you know uh i just don't know what's going to happen to the masses you know in that you know respect what tamara told me on my last episode with her and i thought this was such a good perspective and i'll be careful about how i say this so we are all across the world, we're experiencing shortages. I mean, we see, I, I'm in the best situation living in Atlanta, Georgia than all, all four of us, for sure. For sure. I'm in a conservative state. There's none of this. It's, it's, but we are seeing uh, shortages in our grocery, you go to the grocery store, there are empty shelves for sure. Um, and something that Tamara brought up was that in this process of like deep, we'll just say detoxing the, the dirty off of the, off of the planet, we have to also look at our food supply. Mm -hmm. And we know that our food supply is not like, I know, I know all four of us are probably people that I know I, Catherine, and I've talked about this a lot. I very careful about what I eat. I really look at, but we're still bringing in stuff that we can't because it's out, it's been out of our control. So what's happening um, again, I'm trying to paraphrase it guys. That episode is on rumble for a reason because it's very potent. Um, is a lot of these big corporations that produce 
food around the world have not been using the best things in our food. And so some of what we're seeing on the outside is also the uh, good guys, if you will, taking out that from our circulation in order to then replenish it with stuff that's actually good for humanity. Does that make sense? It that does. I watched that video. That was a great video you did with her. And I got two thirds of the way through and the video stopped and I couldn't watch anymore. <laughs> what reloaded, happened? It's reloaded now and the whole thing works now. So nice try, Satan, but we got it going. So <laughs> it's that really interesting stage, isn't it? What you were both just saying there is, is like, I completely agree. There's so much of our supply chain that needs to go, you know, reliance on buying cheap stuff that's made by slave labor, often by little people in horrendous yeah. conditions that we don't need, that's feeding this consumerism. We know that a lot of our food is, and animals food, don't even get me started on that, you know, is, is produced in atrocious conditions using awful stuff. It's not real food, it's fake food. But equally, we're not set up. So where I am, I live in a lovely countryfied area and I was on my lovely dog walk, my favourite thing to do, I took the ponies up to the top field and, you know, how idyllic is my life and then went out for a two-hour dog walk. And I was just thinking, God, this is just, you know, people talk about this is the most stressful time in history. I was saying this to Bryce earlier and I'm like, look at the Middle Ages. I would have been too old. I wouldn't be alive anymore because I'm well over that, <laughs> you know, what the average age was. Most of us would have had our head cuts off or we'd be so poor that we couldn't eat. You know, the stress that humanity has gone through for centuries. And that's OK, even if a lot of our history isn't real. Mm -hmm. of, in, a lot of the past life regressions people have done, uh, some of that is real. And you're like, it's just been horrific area after horrific area after horrific area. And I was thinking, I'm looking at my life now. My, I am so blessed. You know, I've got running water. I've got f heat. I've got food in the cupboards at the moment. Um, you know, I've got, I live in this beautiful place. And then I go into the city for a day at the weekend and all hell breaks loose. But I, that's why I've never, I've chosen, I cannot live in a city because it's beyond me. And now I know everyone's different and we're all meant to be unique. But I'm like, why would anyone choose to put themselves there? Why would, why would any human choose to live in a city? Now, that's just my perspective. I've got friends that come to where I live and like, oh, that's creepy out here on your own. How could you live there? But I suppose the point I'm trying to put is two points. Going back to the food shortage issue is I agree, we're definitely with what you and Tamara are saying, Bryce, we're definitely moving in the right direction, but how do we bridge that gap? Because like where I am here, we've got plenty of countryside to grow your own food, but no one's doing it because they're all working in London all day. <laughs> you know, they're all, <laughs> they're all doing the corporate jobs. And then, so there's this awkward transition where this is going to stop before that one's ready. Does that make sense? And I think yeah. this is where humanity is going to shine though. Because I remember Prime Minister saying this once, because I said to Prime <clears throat> a long time ago on a show, you know, of course, we've been thinking the end was near for two years now. And I said to him, I was like, but what about all the people who are angry? And Prime said, don't forget about the power of the love of God. Mm -hmm. And with the whole food sort of thing, like I have a pantry full of rice and beans right now, full of it. And so if something were to happen where we couldn't get to the grocery store, I have enough food where I can make sure my neighbors were okay. We might not be eating pretty for a couple of months, might not be gourmet, but there's enough for everybody to have enough to survive. But you what, the dog can't eat that. No, the, well. <laughs> so, do so yeah. wait, 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 I think we could get Robbie sorted. Robbie can hunt, let me tell you. He's a street dog, he knows how to hunt. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I think there's the importance of co-creating, you know, the, the reality that you want, you know, in, in every single way, not, not just with food, but in every way. I mean, I just got myself a space drum. I don't know if you can see behind me. It's it's from France and it's absolutely beautiful. It's like raindrops. <laughs> when you hit it, it sounds like raindrops. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to co-create it within my own environment, a beautiful um, space that, that will take me through this period. Um, and if we all do that, I think that can make a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've already got that. I mean, I'm so happy in mind that I then feel awful and people get really cross with me when I say that on videos. But we've been preparing this for ages. We didn't know it was going to be this, but we've all been doing this work for so long that we've sort of created environments for ourselves, which are 
pretty nice, really, to different degrees, I'm sure. But and if you're holding a high frequency, you'll just actually magnetize that in any way. You know, it will just form around you. You know, so it's all about the, the frequency that you're holding and the energy that you're holding as well. And it's again, it gets time for humanity to shine. I think you look at all these. I mean, I look look at the Underground Railroad. Look at all the times where human where there's been so much friction in humanity, and the majority of people shine. They come out and they start helping each other. You know, in an emergency situation, nobody cares what your political affiliation is, what your race is, what your gender is. They just want to help you. You know, even well, after yeah, exactly. They're doing it. They <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think if that if that were to happen, where there was like a massive shortage of, of food, I think that we're going to see humanity rise up and people yeah, help their neighbors. You know, and not caring about this anymore because they want to make sure, you know, I think I believe most people, most people genuinely don't want to hurt you and genuinely will help you. I, I don't know, you know, if you hear a child, I don't know one person, if they, if they heard a child screaming, wouldn't look around to see what they could do to help, you know, and I do think that will happen. I think that has happened in history is that neighbors will open the door to neighbors and give food to neighbors, give food to the dogs, to the animals to make sure that, um, that everyone's taken care of that, that until we are able to get over that hump of, um, you know, yeah. And we have that, that, that gift of cooking has been kind of stripped from us over the past, what, 50, 60 years of people now eating fast food and ready-made foods and stuff. But I think we'll, we'll pull through it if, if we have to go through something like that. I think, I think, I, I believe humanity will, will get, we might be really skinny when we get done because we won't be eating as much as we normally do, but, but we won't be the same levels of obesity. So that's <laughs> we'll just fix that problem right away. So. What do you think about that, David? I think some people, given the, uh, the obesity epidemic worldwide, some people won't need to eat for a few months and probably need to, uh, would be able to, it would be okay to live off their fat stores but all jokes aside i think uh going back to what you said about being prepared and preparing for this this kind of period without really knowing it i, I completely agree with that i was talking to a friend a couple of days ago and and he said what's the deal over there are you uh are you still fighting because i caught up with him back in 2020 he lives in victoria he came over for, for some work and we had a bit of a chat about this was obviously very fresh at that time because Mm. And he's like, man, I thought he's, he's still fighting. Have you got the thing yet? And I was like, no, I haven't got it. Uh, even though they've just stepped up the, the, you can't really do anything now here. I mean, you can't go to the bottle shop. You can't do, it's stupid. You can actually walk into the bottle shop and do your shopping. But then when you get to the checkout, they won't serve, they won't serve you. So, <laughs> so you've already had, you've already had the potential to spread the damn thing all over the place, but they, oh, it's so God. stupid. But, and uh, the other thing, Dave, too, that, that you can't, uh, it's just come out the court system, the legal system, you can't go into a court anymore unless you've got one of these. Um, so they're oh, really? basically, they can only have the one narrative there, can't they? Because if everyone who's got one of these will, has that perspective, you know, um, it's it's really trying to um, change, change the narrative within that structure. But doesn't that also yeah. mean you and David can do what you like and they can't drag you into court? <laughs> Potentially. How are they going to try it? Because you're not going to be a party. I never thought of that. <laughs> we have but free anyway, reign. <laughs> what I was, what I was going to say was, my my friend goes. He said, "Are you still fighting? Are you are you uh, stand, holding strong?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting it." He goes, "Man, I thought I thought that after a little bit of pressure, like if they took away, I don't know, whatever, a bunch of things, I thought you would have cracked ages ago." And and it. And it kind of occurred to me that a he didn't really know who I was really, but b, <laughs> uh, and maybe I'm a lot stronger than than he thought. But uh, it was it wasn't really about that. It was about kind of, for better or worse, I'd kind of removed myself from society in many ways. You know, like I wasn't working a normal job uh, in in an, in an office. I didn't really go out anymore. I didn't really. The only thing I really needed from society, apart from a gym, which can easily be worked around. Uh, was this was a supermarket and yeah. unless and, you know given that I had like certain electronics that I kind of needed like but if I if I had all of that prior to this then I did, only needed to go to the supermarket and and I was talking to a friend about it and he goes I said you know what I kind of removed myself from society a long time ago and he goes is that a good thing and I said well maybe not necessarily a good thing on the surface but it's a great thing when you think deeper, because if you if you remove yourself from everything, 
And it's the mindset of, it's the, the mentality of removing yourself from not caring what anybody thinks, not, not uh, being reliant on going to a restaurant. Like I know people that really want to take the thing just so they can go to a restaurant mm-hmm. and they don't even go that often, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, well, because I remove myself, society has nothing that I want really mm. you know and, and the average you, the average yeah. person isn't healthy wealthy or wise why would i want to be around those kinds of people you know mm-hmm. i think that if you've taken yourself out of that 3d matrix you're actually going to be able to um function better within this whole transition period that's happening and i notice that people that have done that actually are faring much better on the whole because they're yeah. not ta- they're not sort of um, dependent on, on everything within the system. And, and, and I think that's, that's a great thing. I think that helps this process of transition. And um, yeah, I, I think that's good. So it comes to P, it comes back to, I mean, every single one of us is here on our own unique journey. And we've all got um, certain lessons that we're meant to learn in this life. Sometimes I'm a bit slow, <laughs> but I get there eventually. So, you know, everyone watching this is going to be in a completely different situation. But what what it's really hit home to me personally, on a personal level, is it's almost like I can see now why I've made all these decisions that didn't necessarily make sense or everyone else told me they didn't make sense at the time. Now, hindsight's a sort of wonderful thing. And obviously, I'm at a stage, a later stage of my life, whereas people watching this who are much younger, you know, they, they haven't had the chances necessarily to make certain choices yet but their move their energy that they've been born with is completely different to what I was born into so you can look at you can make as many excuses as you like but when you look back and you can see I can now see exactly why like you were saying really David why I choose to take myself out of those situations so I chose a long while ago to take myself out of the corporate situation and that was a very conscious decision and now I'm so grateful I have for all the reasons that you've just expressed. So these decisions, what we make, and we've all spoken quite a lot before about you, often you get quite a lot of resistance from external people because it's not what they expect you to do. But when you follow your heart and do them, then nine times out of 10, you're going to get all tick. I didn't realize why that was really good, but it was well done sort of thing. Absolutely. I've, I've, you know, my life, um, before all this happened, I was not living, never have I lived a conventional life. Like I was supposed to as a white Southern woman. Um, I've spent most of my adult life going back and forth to India, spending months and months there at a time. It's not conventional. And, um, it's definitely changed the way I've lived my life. And it's so funny. And I think, I don't know if we've talked, spoken about this, Catherine, but, um, no, I've spoken about it with Taylor that, you know, part of any spiritual practice is learning how to see the truth through the illusion, because everything really is an illusion. If you get deeper into that, that's the truth of who you are as an eternal spirit. But there's also a sense of seeing the truth in the world. And one thing I've noticed is uh, looking back on all my time traveling to India, the crap I've been through in my own practice, my diet and of the soul, I was able to see this for what it was from the very beginning. And so looking back, I mean, hindsight is 2020, looking back, all these decisions I had made, which my parents might not have been happy about, society might not have been happy about, really prepared me for this moment sitting here, for me, February 1, 2022, talking to you guys, because I was able to see the truth of the illusion, and it became so much more. What was happening, what we were preparing for was so much more than just this secular idea of success, which really is corporations, work keeping up with the jones we had tapped into something more than that you know what i'm saying i'm not trying to say that from an ego type perspective mm-hmm. because tell i let me my my birthday is this friday and i always panic about i always have like these like massive emotional breakdowns before a birthday ever since i turned 27 which i'll be 39 so that was a long time ago but that i've had this like stress and it, and it usually came down to this idea of like all the expectation that have been put on me for my whole life of where i was supposed to be in, in the society I come from and that I'm not. And even though I, c- I could never go there, I could never be a part of that, that never was a- a- attracted to me. There was this sense of like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, because I'm doing something that nobody else has done before. Um, but in the same time, this is the first birthday coming up where I actually am feeling really relaxed because I feel like there's a purpose. There's, there's been some, some, something deeper there. Does that make sense? And 
Mm. Yes. Yeah, yes. Totally. My, my, partner, my partner has his birthday on the Thursday, the day before. So. Oh, <laughs> yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> Okay. But I love the quote, if you can see through the illusion, you are part of the solution. And um, I've got that on my desktop because I think that's really powerful. And uh, yeah, so but, but I think the illusion is, is great because when, when you know that you're in the illusion, then um, it gives you a sense of motivation to move forward and do something about it. Um, and um, a friends, a lot of people actually online lately have been talking about we're in a simulation. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother level again. But, um, you know, that's a bit much of a mind warp for me at the moment to go it's there. It's a reality show for the aliens. Come on. This is like Earth season 12. Where are we at? We're just a reality show right now. So. I know. <laughs> Well, it's funny because there's a lot of spiritual communities where like I like I now I'm, I'm disgusted when I see like a yoga shala where they're requiring this or this like I'm disgusted by that like that disgusts me like what have you been doing all these years gymnastics obviously mm. you, you don't understand liberation which is the whole point of this freaking practice is liberation if you're not it's like um do you guys know that uh creator JP Spears is that his name JP Spears yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, this this yoga magazine here, Elephant, I think it was Elephant Journal, I think, I'm not 100% sure, wrote like a hit piece on him because he's like like us. And I was out walking the dog the other day and I was like, that's so funny that a yoga magazine would write a hit piece on someone preaching liberation. Yeah. That's yeah, what it's about. yeah. The price yeah, of freedom is eternal. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. I love that, <laughs> that quote. Lots of quotes Girl, today. Here we are, rest at some point. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things I've learned, and it's been really brought to, um, to front with the Joe Rogan thing. Oh, I saw the biggest thing before, because I just shared on my Telegram um, about how they've had a new study from Japan showing that the horse do worm, or I won't mention the word, actually does work. <laughs> which yeah. we all knew all along. Some, so yeah, I yeah. just shared it. And then Joe Rogan shared it, not via me, unfortunately. Um, and he's got absolutely slated on Spotify again for spreading misinformation. It's like, this is a scientific study done by a really serious institute in Japan. It's not misinformation at all. It's just not the information you've done. But the whole truckers thing um, and the Joe Rogan thing has really made me take a big look at myself because I've said all the way through this that I as an individual I as an individual am anti all of them for humans actually because I've been studying it for 20 years and I've never found one for humans that works that I'm still looking into there's very little study on some of the other ones so like you know Bryce and I've got rescue dogs from places abroad where a lot of the diseases like distemper are really rife and we don't have rabies in the UK and things like this so that that I'm still researching so I can't give a firm opinion on that and then everyone's coming out saying I'm not anti -e -e -e. and I was thinking well, well you are because you've said all this stuff here why don't you just say it but what I mean is when I mean I'm anti this I mean for me not for anyone else making an informed decision. And so I realized it's all terminology and how people choose to perceive that. So I am, for me, a bit anti this, but I'm, I haven't got a problem if a consenting adult chooses to make a choice. Like, like people who volunteer themselves for medical trials, I really admire them. Good, if you consciously choose to volunteer yourself for a medical trial, I'd far rather they did that than tested on animals. But I object to them doing medical trials on people that haven't consented. That's a completely different point. And I certainly project yeah. them doing, you know, medical trials on animals that absolutely have not consented. And most There's so much disinformation. There's so much disinformation in the whole, you know, um, the pharmaceutical area that people can't make informed choices anyway. Exactly. Because they don't don't have the full range of knowledge that they need to make proper decisions and um you know really it's just the truth is so inverted when it comes to these areas so that's why the whole system has to actually um be um you know uh dissolved so that we can create create a whole new structure because the way it's set up at the minute i mean you look at the the media system my gosh 
The global news is owned by Chorus Entertainment. Chorus Entertainment is owned by Shaw Corporation. Shaw Corporation is owned by Rogers Media. Rogers Media is owned by the Vanguard Group. Vanguard Group owns Pfizer, Moderna, Merck, Johnson & Johnson. I mean, you know, Vanguard Group also owns Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you know. They own everything. Like, there's there's no like, way that we can get information. Every um, multinational. Out, yeah, exactly. And, and the sources that are in front of us that gives us any any sort of opinion that is um, um, informed or balanced. I know. And you had some good points about that, David, when we were speaking to each other for our messenger and things about the whole concept of intelligence, education, informed choice. You know, there, you had some really good points to bring up about that. Yeah, <laughs> intelligence is one of those funny topics that Everybody has their definition, which is typically the, the societal definition of intelligence, which is basically just academia, right? And it, it comes up often because intelligence is always the marker, isn't it? It's always like, oh, that person's not that smart, or that person's really smart, or whatever. And and I, I kind of, you know, over the over the last few years, I've been thinking, like, what is the real definition of intelligence? Because there could be so many definitions. You know, if your definition of intelligence is basically how well someone can do at school, then it's so narrow-minded. Like you could take uh, the, the 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 idea that somebody is really really good at say woodwork or something. That's a different level of intelligence altogether. But that's not really. But who cares about that? You know, in society, really, it's all about how well you can you can you know quote unquote or memorize things. But I had a a mentor of mine I was speaking to recently, and he said his his definition of intelligence was the ability for someone to design their life in a way that they want, but also create a plan and execute it and successfully, which I thought was pretty cool, but also, you know, maybe a bit long winded, but I watched this video just a couple of days ago. You know, when you, you, you see videos, it had nothing to do with intelligence whatsoever, but the woman in, in the video said, intelligence isn't your brain. Intelligence is your mind and the power behind it. And, and that was like one of the biggest things I took from that video, which I think is an amazing definition because it's universal. It's one of the things that we all have. People may be born with a good memory or a good, you know, uh, elite athletic ability or whatever, any, any number of skills, but the, the mind is the one thing that we all have. It's a level playing field. And I think that's, that's why it's important because we, we need to have, how can, you, how can you say that someone is quote unquote unintelligent when just because they have a good, you know, or, you know, because they have a good memory or whatever, they don't have a good memory for that thing that they're trying to memorize. You know, it has to be a level playing field. I guess I, I look at it in terms of consciousness more than intelligence, but it's sort of the same thing, but it's another way of looking at it. But um, sort of uh, different consciousness creates different different um, experiences. And um, intelligence to me is, is a bit more about the, the, the mental body, the mind, the cerebral, whereas consciousness is more to do with maybe the soul. And, and so that's how I sort of look at things, I guess. And I was listening, it was funny, because we were messaging each other about that, David, and then at the same time I was listening, because I'm, I'm so into the animal communication, and I was listening to this brilliant video, and one of this, it was so lovely to see, because it was this top um, behaviourist, and I, I did biology and animal behaviour, and virtually everything I learned about animal behaviour in university, I now know is completely wrong, because we were always told not to um put human emotions on animals and now that's been disproved and we were told that what separates humans from the rest of the animal kingdom was the ability to think ahead use tools well that's been disproven because we now know there's loads of animals that can use tools and we know that there's loads of animals that can plan ahead and problem solve and everything and it was so beautiful to see this professor I wish i could find the link again now but that was so set on the fact that there was such a huge difference between humans and animals. And then he said, but we've now crossed off everything on the list that was the definition of the difference between humans and other animals. And now we do all have to accept that we are just another form of animal. Because look at the mm -hmm. whale's intelligence, look at the cheetahs, the thing, you, are, you need a different type of awareness, consciousness, thought processes, it's, it's no good me being a human and um thinking like a horse unless i'm interacting with my horses because i don't live like a horse well i do actually but <laughs> not a good example but do, you know it's so relative and you're so right david i mean 
look at what's happened now. I mean, it's it's been so obvious this last two years because everyone has pointed out that supposedly really intelligent people have got no common sense. And isn't that that? Well, but do we mean by common sense that actually can't tune in to what's really happening? Because all these hugely um, successful professors and scientists and lawyers who were respected and won Nobel Prizes and all sorts of awards, as soon as they've gone across the narrative, now all of that has been slated and now suddenly they're a nobody. Just shows how ridiculous it is, doesn't it? It's a completely man-made label. Yeah, animals right. would see through it, I reckon. <laughs> you know, they, they see the truth. <laughs> yeah. We can all learn from them right now. I've got a new alarm clock. My, 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 my dog jumps on my arm and taps me every morning to get up. <laughs> so that's my new alarm clock. <laughs> my, my dog, I'll tell you funny, he, uh, he's a, again, he's a rescue. Uh, he was rescued as a puppy from India. So he, he doesn't have the street smarts that a lot of the adult dogs we've rescued. He doesn't know what a car is, but he, you know, when you kiss, I kiss them all the time. I just, I kiss them. And, you know, when we think of dogs kissing, we think of licking, but Ravi will actually take his snout and push it into you and then pull back. And that's him kissing you. So like all through the night, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I get this boop right on my face. <laughs> just sit there looking at me. So yes, but back to the intelligence thing. One thing I, cause one of the things I've been doing on my channel that I've been loving doing is going through the missing books of the Bible, because there's so much more to that story that, uh, more psychedelic metaphysical stuff than the real story of of Joshua or Jesus and and of course the Magdalene as well because she was the counterpart and in the original uh gospels the original theology behind um this new Christ consciousness at the time was this big thing people heard the Gnostics or Gnosis versus Edio this is Greek words Gnosis was inner knowing Edio was outer knowing so EDO is everything that involves an educational system, reading a book, it, 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 reading the mind, but the gnosis, that is something that no one can teach you. It's an inner, in the yoga sutras, it's called prativa. It's a flash of illumination. You know, it's the spark of consciousness. And I do think that that, in my opinion, that flash of consciousness, that spark of illumination, that gnosis that to me is the highest level of intelligence. And that's, that's something we're all born with. You know, like you look at a child, a small child who doesn't even know how to go to the bathroom by themselves and they know what God is. They know what source is. They see the angels. They don't need anybody to tell them that, that they were created for a reason. They have that connection to the divine. And then something happens along the way where that gets disrupted. Are, are we told we're crazy or, you know, you know, don't trust your gut, you know, better to learn the books you know and so i think and i do think because i know Catherine, you brought up a lot of good points about we need people who are good at the intellectual stuff mm -hmm. and maybe in the future we can find in the, in the new earth we can find a place where both the gnosis and the edo have their correct balance if that makes sense i think i'm doing the programming is such a big point to do with what you're talking about you know the programming we get as adults all the way through life to create us to, to fit into the program that they want and and so um going back to that state of the inner child and and, and that purity and that um clarity that that we actually um lose as as we grow within this 3d matrix um reality um so i think just undoing all that programming is, is part of what we need to do to get to a better place and to accept everyone's gifts, because, you know, I always use this scenario because everyone in my house loves football, is you've got to have your goalkeeper, your defenders, your midfields, your strikers. The whole point is we need the carpenters. We, we do need surgeons. We do need, um, uh, you know, car mechanics. We do need cooks. We do need um vets for certain things i mean I've, i i do loads of holistic therapies but i still have to have a vet at times you know so i think it, it, it's appreciating the different stages but not putting a judgment and a level on top of them you know but and that's where i think i'm so excited to see where it goes forward i am really really excited i mean look at what's happening now this last year never before i think have manual workers been so appreciated because everyone's now thinking 
it's no good me being an actuary or an accountant or a bank manager or an investment banker. You know, I need a, a trucker, I need a mechanic, I need a carpenter, I need I need the practical skills. I'm afraid you guys, <laughs> you're not as a, it's, people are really looking at things differently, don't you think, and realising that so many people I know are, are moving out to the country or, or changing their lifestyle or are saying now, actually, I know we're allowed into the office, but I'm not commuting up to London every day again, like I used to, leaving at five o'clock in the morning and getting home at eight o'clock at night. Where I'm, I've got used to seeing my family now and going for a jog at lunchtime. I'm not going back to that. Yeah. What's, what's that life? That's what Alan Watts is. Alan Watts is my favourite um, mm people that brought really brought Eastern philosophy to the forefront to the Western world. And it was one thing, you know, people was like, what's the point of life? What's the point of life? And he used to say, the point of life is to be alive, mm. be alive, you know, and that's, 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 that's a, yeah, you're right. Cause I know like my parents live outside of Atlanta and here in Atlanta, we have uh, the MARTA system, which is like our subway, but it only goes in like two directions. No one really takes it. Trust me. It's hot as balls in the summertime. You do not want to be six feet under the ground <laughs> here in the summertime, but, um, but everybody drives like this is a driving city. You have to drive and traffic is unbelievable. And I had a friend growing up outside of Atlanta. He would literally spend like four hours in the car every day just to get to downtown Atlanta, where he was uh, an engineer work all day and then drive like two hours of traffic back home five days a week. That's not life. Mm. That's not life. Like, ooh, like, why do you want to do that? Like, that's, and, and I feel so blessed, like, finding, being able to do YouTube now, because I work from home now. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's given me a flexible schedule. It's given me, you know, I get to spend a lot more time outside with my dog. I get to, you know, it, it, it has given us that appreciation for just being alive, just being here to, to breathe and experience and, and be the witness. I mean, that's a big thing in the yoga world is being the witness, is being able to watch everything and take it in and observe it you know, um, without judgment and then react after you process without judgment. So, um, and so, yeah, hopefully, you know, they say whatever the devil will use for mad for bad, God will make for good. And so this whole situation with what's happened globally in the last two years, I really feel like we are after this is all over, we're going to look back and see what an important like incubation time, like, um, cocooning mm. time it was for mm. us spiritually to have that, um, kind of, What's it? Cindy says, sometimes you have to descend before you can ascend to kind of have that dark night of the soul, be, be forced to sit in solitude. Um, they wanted it for our, for our worst, but we ended up using it for the better to, to better ourselves, to find ourselves again and to, to course correct as, as humanity. Cause it can, you can look at it from one way that it's super stressful because every country in the world is going through this. So there's like nowhere to go. Like you can't just go, like there's no, there's no safe haven to go to. It's, it's every country is in this situation. So where are you going to run to? You can look at it that way in a bad way, or you can look at it like, holy crap, every country in the world is in a situation. We have no choice, but to evolve as humanity. Right. We all have to go yeah. together. And, and it's balance, isn't it, too? Because you can get caught up in the volcano of it all and, 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 and sort of um, it, it's a very disruptive energy and, and it doesn't feel good. It's very disturbing. You know, when you get caught up in all the 3D and, and look at catching up on all the posts of what's happening and rah, rah, rah. But the, you have to have that balance, I think, uh, and, which is hard to, to, to co-create sometimes, which is just where you are the witness, which is what you're talking about, where you're just viewing it um you're living your own life you're aware of what's happening but you're not too caught up in it so that it it becomes everything in your life and that you're not actually living life yeah. so that that's another um thing that can happen that you just get so caught up in everything that's going on that you don't actually live life right david what do you i'm oh, sorry carry on no i think we've been accustomed to um, on purpose we've been accustomed to think that doing what you guys are talking about leaving leaving, you know, for work at 5 a.m. or whatever it is and coming home at 8 or even if it's 7 to 7 or whatever, that is normal. You know, we've been accustomed to that is life. And and when, when you want to do something different, people look at you a bit funny. You know, I'm sure we've all had that experience where we've all set our lives up now and made those decisions that, that society would have frowned upon, like you mentioned, Catherine. And that, but we were doing it maybe not even necessarily from our, maybe our higher self, I don't know, but you know what I mean? Like it, and it's just funny how it kind of goes back to removing yourself from society because you, you kind of know what you want and you know that you didn't want any of that, whatever that was. Right. And, uh, so 
yeah, I think I think that it's it's just so funny how things work out, you know. And you can we can use this time for growth, like you mentioned, Bryce. We can. Unfortunately, there'll be a certain percentage of people that won't. You know, there'll be a certain percentage of people that will just go retreat back into what it, safety or maybe even God forbid, take themselves off the earth plane or whatever. Something will happen. You know, they're not ready. Their soul isn't ready. But uh, majority of people, I think, will will rise up. And for people like us who have done a lot of the work prior, it's not going to be as challenging as it would have been if we hadn't. Oh God, yes, absolutely. And and I think that's important to hit on that because I know. I've spoken a lot about that because of, of you know, if anybody reads the law of one, it's it very much outlines what's happening right now. Um, and, and, and it's exciting to read it because it, it explains it, but the soul, the soul has to be ready, you know, and there are people on this, you know, the biggest illusion that we have in as humanity, as human beings, as in this humaning experience we're in is this idea of death. That's just an illusion. Mm. the only thing that goes away is the body the soul you can't you can't you can't kill a soul you know it's okay. an energy energy can't it can't be destroyed or created it can, it can only be shifted right and so in the law of one talks about this that you know the universe god source you know whatever you want to call the, the bigger picture it's nothing but love and it's like mm. if you have a kindergartner student you wouldn't then all of a sudden take your five-year-old kindergarten and stick them in university like that's ludicrous. You would want them to experience all those grades in between so they could grow and develop at their own pace. Or if there's a student that needs to be held back a year for whatever reason, of course you would lovingly do that for them, right? And that's kind of what the soul's journey is too. And some people, some people's souls are not ready to meet and that's okay. And you know, a lot, and I know that there's gonna be a lot of, and I know people get upset when I say this, but there are gonna be a lot of people that are gonna have to like exit soon because they're not ready to go into the fourth density and that's okay. And we have to get rid of this like illusion that, that there's a timeline, that there's a, there's like, and that's hard for us as human beings, right? Because we live, we live in a property and nature based existence and nature has beginning, middle, end. And the whole law of beginning, middle, end is change. And so we're constantly fighting against this timeline, but the, but that's just the nature. That's the Shakti, the expression of what's eternal because the eternal is never changing and is always the same and is always growing eternally towards that same end light, that same end goal. We're all, it's like the Ram Dass quote, we're all just walking each other home. Literally, we're all, some of us are gonna get there before the other ones, but we're all just walking in the same direction towards the same light. But if some people aren't ready, that's okay. You know, we, if, we, if we force someone, we try to force someone to evolve with us, then that in itself is a negative quality. They have to want to do it themselves. They have to be able to do, do it themselves. Because also I, I, they're just assuming that um, that they want the same as us and they don't because their view on the world is completely different. So what we see as traumatic or painful is difficult. They, they don't have those struggles because they've got a different view on world and um, life. And also what you were saying earlier, Bryce, about you can't just run away to another way of the country. I think that is the perfect analogy for a lot of the spiritual conundrum because so many people think when I've changed my job I'll be happy when I have kids I'll be happy when this happens when yep. I get a nice haircut I'll be happy. get the nice. right boyfriend uh, get the right uh, but, you know the yeah, point yeah. is the fact that it's happened in most places on the globe so many it's such human nature to run away from challenge and we okay. haven't been able to run away with challenge we've been stuck here and therefore we, and look at how it is all being resolved, touch wood, we're seeing a lot of progress in a lot of different ways. But if we'd have all been able to move to Mexico or Florida or whatever, we wouldn't have resolved any of those issues, either for ourselves or for the planet. And so I think it's so great that, that we've been forced to sit there because there's so many people that, you know, that I work with and they, they always think when this happens, it will be OK. And we know, no, you've got to deal with the issue now. Otherwise, you're just going to take that issue with you to the new situation. It reminds me of my kids because one of my girls, her hair was straight and she would always say, oh, if only I had curly hair, <laughs> everything would be OK. And then my son, he went through a phase where he said, Oh, I wish I was black. I love black people. They're so cool. <laughs> and he wanted to be black. 
<laughs> I, I tried my when I was in my 20 early 20s I, I come from a family full of blonde people just full of blonde people blue eyed blonde people and I dyed my hair really dark in my 20s and I remember when I first came back from the hairdresser my, my friend was like girl you were meant to be a blonde and it took me forever to get like that dye so I totally get that the grass is always on the other side but we gotta learn to accept what we've been given so no, it is hysterical I think the other thing too is the point that you made Bryce about how we've been really indoctrinated within the Western culture to fear death and to not be able to deal with death. You know, it's become very taboo. You know, it's one of the most taboo topics. You can't speak about death because it's just not appropriate. You know, And it's like we, we've learned to really become very scared of this concept of what it is to, to, to die and to, to really disconnect from the fact that our soul is just going on a journey in, in the same way that, that, you know, we were born, it's continuing its journey. But, um, you know, the whole Western culture is actually set up or, or you could say the, the the, the cabal agenda or indoctrination program is to make us extremely um, sort of unknowing about this and to be extremely fearful of, of this process when when really we need to undo again all that programming that that makes us not live life because we're scared of dying because we're scared of death and and so that often the things that are our challenges and our obstacles there's a deep subliminal subconscious fear of dying that creates these challenges and these difficulties. When we release that and know that we continue forever, it really liberates us on so many levels to, to live life fully. It's so hard, it's so funny, because when you were saying that, I was trying not to laugh, because if any of you just see me today, my neighbors, I am the laughing stock of the neighborhood. So what happens is I've got my old dog, Star, who's 16, and um, she likes nice, slow, walks not very far and then I've got the younger dogs Lola and Indy who want to go miles very quickly now whenever I take Lola and Indy and they're Romanian Idris the cat wants to come so it's like a comedy show where we have to try and sneak out the house because where we live we're right in the middle of the countryside but there's a little bit of road that we need to go across so we're looking around because it's either my daughter or I that normally take them and then when Idris is not around, we're sneaking out running and then suddenly you hear this meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so today I got halfway down the little stretch of lane and this is relevant, by the way. <laughs> and then so I've got my dogs and they're so excited for their walk. And then I hear this meow, 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 meow. And I'm like, oh, God, Idris. Now, going back to the fear of death, for myself, I would like to say I've got no fear of death. But I was absolutely shitting myself that my cat was on the road yeah. because I'm his mummy and it's my job. So then I then, it's like an absolute joke. So I've got these two dogs and they're desperate pulling that way because they want to go on the walk. And then I'm scooping up Idris, who's a big boy now and trying to run back down the road with him. And then the car's coming and I'm going, stop, stop like this. They're looking at my van. So, cause I'm worried about Idris getting run over, but my what? husband just lets him come. Oh yeah. My no, husband no, just lets him come and touch wood. He's always surprised because my husband's like, he knows what he's doing. He's out. 23 hours of the day without us <laughs> you know you can't manage yeah. micromanage the 10 minutes there so what you were saying about the fear of death I think quite a lot of people I know very good when it comes to themselves but if they're a parent of two or four-legged then it can become a bit more challenging I think Oh, Sam, I'm, I'm terrified of rock. Because like I said, my dog, I mean, living in a city, we have to have him on a leash anyway. And we do yeah. take him off leash when, like in the mountains or down in Florida, he's off leash a lot. But um, like I said, he was rescued as a small puppy. So he has no clue about cars, like mm -hmm. none whatsoever. Um, and I'm terrified. All, even though he's on leash, I'm constantly like checking to make sure he's not stepping off the sidewalk or yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's funny, you know, my, my grandfather, I've told this story on my channel before, my dad's dad, who is no longer, all of my grandparents are gone now, but he had a, a near death experience when he was in his forties. Um, he had a massive like heart attack. And while he was in the hospital, when they were doing the emergency, whatever, he floated above his body. He heard the nurses and doctors having conversation. And he said, he walked into a light and it was a, 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 a light like you could not describe. And he says he saw Jesus come down and he, my grandfather said it was just so beautiful. He didn't want to leave. And what? Jesus kept saying, no, Ed, you have to go back. It's not your time. And my grandfather basically threw my grandmother under the bus and was like, Marianne's got this. She, she can handle it. <laughs> you know, you know, leave her with three kids behind, you know, 
but then he woke up in his hospital bed. And of course, the doctors at first thought that he had experienced something chemical from what was happening. But when he started to explain the conversation he heard while he was flatlining, then they were like, oh, something did happen. And, and I knew only knew him after that because I was born when he was in his 50s. But he would tell that story all the time to people who were on their deathbed because he literally did not fear death. After that happened, he literally had no fear of death. At his own sister's funeral a couple of years before he finally died for the second time, he was giddy. He was like, Jane's fine. She's having a blast. She's I'm jealous. You know, she's fine. <laughs> you know? And so it's like that he had that, mem- that that experience that like liberated him to yes. fear. And, and he, knowing him as my grand, I, mean, I never, never knew him before, but he was so loving. He had so much integrity and he was just so like, you know, he, he was just such a bit, I mean, he was like six, five. So he was literally a, a big dude, but, um, but, you know, and, and I just think about that a lot. He's no longer with us anymore, but, and when literally like before he died, I remember going out to lunch with him a couple of years and he was eating. He was like, I think I'm going to be only here for like a couple more years. Like he was just very matter of fact about leaving again and, and understanding that, that you're literally just leaving and going to something new. You're not, nothing ha- you're not disappearing you're not disappearing you know um you know what i suffering says i know everyone's got different opinions about who says what but you know you on a always said we've we've got to all collectively go through a near-death experience do you think he was talking about this in terms of going through such enforced changes that we all start really appreciating what we have got probably yeah. Good, good, and, good and analogy. Yeah. I think we're nearly there. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think I, I can see a train wreck coming that's unavoidable. And, yeah. and I was wondering, that was going to be a question I had to all of you was, do you think, because he talks about the US going through it. And I was like, do you, is it going to be a worldwide thing? Is it going to be a, it has you know, to be. It, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because I, I can see, good. I can see it's coming and it's coming soon. It's going to be pretty yeah. soon. Yeah. But, by the way, speak, speaking of Jesus, you've got all this light emanating down above you, Dave. You, you look like you've got a halo. Actually, I had a, I had a question for all of you, and it was something that um, one of you mentioned. Was it? It might have been Bryce, or I don't know. You said that you know energy can't be created nor destroyed. Maybe it was Catherine, uh, and. And if that is the case, and I, which I believe it is, why is it you get these old souls and then you get these people, these, you know, quote unquote, not old souls? Is it just because, because if we've all been around at the same time, wouldn't we all be the same age or whatever, right? Or that's is it a, just that's that? That's a question for the galactics, because I know it, my, that's something I've been studying on my own now, just the whole concept of the 12 tribes of Israel actually being galactic. And that the Lyran group, the lion group is the house of Judah, which is why the Lyrans have like a golden hue, which is the whole orange man bad thing, which is what they were pointing out was that their people's skin color is going to start to shift a little bit when we start to move up into our galactic heritage. But I, I know the Lyran group is like one of the oldest groups of humanity. Um, and a lot of, I would guess from my, you know, this is just my own guesswork assumption, which my father used to say, assume he makes an ass out of you and me. So take, take that with a grain of salt that most of us who are awake awake right now on this journey that are have these platforms are probably from a group like the Lyran. Um, the law of one calls it wanderers that we decided to come down to help the, the, the newer souls, whether that's created by source that have come in to, to help them pull forward. I don't know, because I think the only thing that can create that energy would be like God or source, whatever you want to call the main Mac daddy, um, mother i know the the sophia text the gospel of the holy 12 calls it mother father energy um so that's a really good question david i don't know if the human mind has an answer i don't i don't know what do you guys think well, i think that i think that it's two things i think perhaps maybe on on one level the people that are awake or that are considered old souls are souls that progress at a much faster rate than the other ones for one and two they say that we have the ability to, to be, our soul can incarnate on, what is it, 140 different, yes. Uh, yes. 140 different, you know, things, sites, planets or realities simultaneously, right? Yep. So it could just be that, it could just be that the majority of the souls that incarnate on earth or that are here right now, just haven't, it's the first, it's kind of, well, not the first, but you know, they haven't incarnated, you know what I mean? Like they, 
more more souls just incarnated here that weren't more evolved if that makes sense you know so the majority of souls that for some reason didn't it's it's very it's a bit of a mind it's a bit of a mind yes. f but you know yeah. like it yeah is. could could the souls have emanated from the godhead at different times oh, so that they didn't all emanate at once but right. at different stages yeah. And so that they're, 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 it could be maybe something to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, oh, sorry, Medina, have you finished? <laughs> yes. It's delay. It's really hard, isn't it? With Jane. I heard a really funny thing this week. And again, oh, sorry, I can't remember who said it, but it was funny. So I've heard a lot of people, spiritual people, not all, but a lot of them, that when they're talking about the old souls, it's almost like it comes across that old souls are better or more involved, evolved than young souls. But this person was hysterical and it really resonated. It was like, well, actually the old souls have had to come back a lot more times to learn the lessons. <laughs> so stop thinking you're above everyone else because actually you've had to keep coming back because you've been a bit slow on the uptake sort of thing. And I just thought it was brilliant because thought, actually it's like, you know, at, a, at some sort of conscious level, they we're still comparing which is better, <laughs> old or young, you know? You, well, don't, you don't compare an adult with a child and say, well, that child's not good enough because they're young and they don't know, you know. It's exactly. Like, <laughs> it's, it was just really made me laugh. I thought, hallelujah, I'm glad someone's addressed it because I had heard a lot of sort of almost snobbery about being an old soul and it just really made me giggle anyway. So the young <laughs> souls haven't got it yet either. So none of us, yeah. well, the whole thing about the soul being able to split off, when I first found that out, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is so, I, what is this? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the whole twin flame thing, right? Is that they're, 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 it's one soul that decided to split into two people, even though you're whole within yourself, but your soul is split. But then you start to think about how many times you've now yeah. split and how yeah. you can be, you can be doing something galactically with one fraction of your soul while your other soul is like standing at the grocery store picking out bread. You know, it's like, it, it's, 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 and even with like these spirit board, you can like channel your higher self too, which is bizarre because let me tell you, I like my higher self a whole Thank lot. Thank you, Bryce. Stuff. You've been having such fun with these. <laughs> no one did, no one did you. But I've no got one a question for you on this then, Bryce. Okay, for everyone, but. I have this, something keeps coming up to me. I keep getting this resistance when people talk about the, what is it, twin souls or, or flame. yeah, twin flames. Because going back to David's point about if we're all energy, if we all believe that we are all connected anyway, then mm. what is this? Is it like, oh, I'm just a bit more connected to with that person that because we've all got each other in it. We're, all, we're all connected but literally from what i understand it because i have really come across this with the magdalene and the christ that they're both with the christ consciousness as in twin flames and that not everybody actually has a twin flame there's only a certain amount because your soul made an agreement at some point to actually split into two and it, for whatever whatever soul contract that was whatever work that you had to do your soul actually split into two entities this sounds like a sci. It sounds like a sci-fi movie. It really does. Like a see. Yeah, I don't. It just feels off to me. I know everyone sort of believes it, but it's like. So are we saying then that souls aren't part of the energy? No, they are. They absolutely. If they're are. part of the energy, surely all our souls are connected. They are, but it's like different. Like Taylor Moon does a really good job of explaining it because, like, you have your soul family, hmm. which that has taken me a while to understand. Um, which is not your biological. That's your, your biological family is considered your karmic family. Um. Hmm. And then you have soul mate. Oh, soul sisters. <laughs> well, my, I mean, my, well, the funny thing is, is my sister and I don't have any karma. We have, we're complete dharmic. Like we have no, it's like we are perfectly smooth sailing. So, but I know there are other members of my family I have karma with for sure. But, um, but then you have like soul, cause we've lived many lives, right? So you have all these soul connections, but the twin flame is literally, and, and not, not all twin flames are ever going to be together in a life or even know each other. You know, it depends on what, what the purpose was for that soul because everything is about you learning and growing right so whatever your soul needed to do to evolve is what it did and if it meant splitting off into two and as you're saying david it could be 140 mm -hmm. that your soul decided to fraction off into maybe there was a, an ability for you to, to make, learn more lessons if you split and had two different experiences does that make sense um i mean it's wild it's wild the the the, the amount of um 
possibilities that there are. And that's what also creates like multidimensional timelines as well that's happening constantly. I mean, we talked about it when we started filming, the fact that I, we were saying that we understand we're about to flip timelines, which um, from what I, because we know that the, the Gregorian calendar isn't real. We know the Julian calendar isn't real. And what I keep getting from this is the, we're going back to the Atlantean calendar. Well, what is that? We don't know because we have no idea what that looked like. So what is the real date? You know, like, I don't know. You know, so there's so many different realms of possibilities when it comes to the cosmos and the galactics and, and multidimensional timelines that are happening that, you know, again, it just comes down to your own soul's contract, like what you decided to do with your guides, your before coming down again to this plane of existence, because it really is all just a school. It's all just a learning experience for you to learn yourself. It's like Alan Watts says, it's like the eyeball trying to see itself. You know, yeah. that's what the eyeball is actually trying to see. How do you do that? You can't look in the mirror because that's a distorted view of what the eye, the eye, you know, I can see your eyeball, but can you see your own eyeball without any type of reflective gear? Mm. It's the unsolvable riddle, right? This all makes me laugh so much because you know how we've all said we can't wait to watch the real movie when it's over. Well, I could, when you were just saying that, Bryce, I was thinking, can you imagine the hysterical conversations that when our soul, when we, when we, pass over from this life and our soul goes up to and um, re-meets the the guides that have helped you choose what you came back can you imagine what the hell did you make me go and do that for why did I have agreed why did you trade me to do that it just makes me laugh I bet, bet there's some really interesting discussions that go the law on of one says that that sometimes the soul when the soul is is getting to ready to take a life because one life on this earth plane is so fast in spirit world that we're trying to get like everything in we're like give me a bad breakup here give me a divorce here <laughs> give me like we're trying to get everything in our guides are like whoa tiger like and then we get here, we're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, you know, because it's so overwhelming. Like bingo, you know, you're desperately trying to take them off as quick as possible, but sometimes you might be better just slowing down. <laughs> Pick one of two. Do you want the bad divorce or do you want the car accident? Pick one of two. Or you know, some people get like seven divorces you know, exactly. in their lifetime. Like that soul was an eager beaver, an overachiever, like <laughs> give it all. Let's just let's just get through this. You know, and, and, and there's some amazing women who've had many, many multiple marriages, and they actually seem to know a lot. More than some of the other ones so you know there's no judgment there <laughs> but isn't it funny though isn't it funny how people uh sometimes they go through a divorce or multiple and they keep marrying the same person yeah and so they keep the having these divorces they're not learning the because, lesson yeah. because they're not learning the lesson right so when they get to the end if they never if they get to the end of their life and they they go up there and they they go and you know, review and, and see what happened. They go, well, I didn't even learn that lesson. I have to go and do it all again, you know, and, and have another seven divorces. <laughs> I think on the whole, we're, we're spiraling upwards, you know, we're, we're in the process of, of evolving and ascending. So it's a continual process of going up. And as we go up in that spiral, we're magnetizing to us the things that we need for our experience in order to do that. And so I think if you think of it as a way of um, everything that comes to you, you're magnetizing to you in order for that process to spiral upwards. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Cats, cats. Come cats, come to me. <laughs> oh, there's many. You know when they take the piss about these old ladies who live with lots of cats. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that. I have got humans in my life too, but what, what could possibly be wrong with that? I don't get it. So obviously, I'd love to see what that means about what happened in my last life. Oh well, you can tell we're all on good form because we do have a laugh. I mean, I think there's been a huge shift. If you look back on perhaps what we were where we were at vibrationally when we first started doing round tables and where we are now I think it shows a huge shift in um where where we're at and how good things are yeah laughter is the best medicine it really is and that's one thing that's the highest level of spirituality is when you can actually laugh at yourself when you don't take yourself that seriously where you can't laugh at yourself and laugh at your situation sometimes and so laughter I mean Catherine you know I my weekly videos with Taylor and Stephanie, we, I didn't think we were going to release that video. We ended up just losing it in the middle of a reading and, <laughs> you know, and it just is what it is. It's, it's laughter is the best medicine. So it does change the vibration for sure. Mm. Any final words from you, David? I would just like to say that uh, 
I, I think that there are many animals that are smarter than humans on, on many levels. <laughs> uh, just to go back to something that was, we spoke about before, but I never got to have a chance to say that. But I, I do think that animals a lot. In, in, <laughs> you see animals do so many crazy things, and it's like some humans, you know, you know I'm not going to go into it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But, uh, in terms of in terms of parting, <laughs> in terms of parting words. <laughs> oh my God! I don't know. I even know where to begin. There's just so much happening, and it just like really, I think, center yourself and and really. I don't know. I, I always say this: do the things that you want to do in life, because it's not you never like tomorrow's never promised, is it? So mm. it we kind of you know. You'd be surprised at what you can get done if you just put your mind to it. I know there's a lot of distraction out there. I'm distracted all the time because of the stuff that's happening. In the last two years, I've been more distracted uh, than ever uh, for obvious reasons. But at, at the same time, I've also achieved more than I've ever, than I ever have. You know, in that in that two years before, you know, in that two years as well. So you can do a lot if you just really kind of put your mind to it. And imagine what will happen once once this all is gone. At you know. And or well, we move to a different, uh, a different uh, part of it. Let's just say, um, imagine how productive you'll be then. Mm. I, I think it's just about following your heart and following your truth, and um, then then you can't really go wrong. And 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 you know, if those truckers and those people joining in those convoys, if that's in their heart and that's their truth, then you know, all power and and so much um, you know, love and support and blessings to you all everyone that's doing that and just for everyone that's following their their truth and their and their heart you know i think that's a brilliant example that you can give the world at the moment so oh yeah here here what's about you bryce to everybody watching you are enough you are loved you are special and if there is something in your life that is the pattern that you recognize in your life whether it's a work job a relationship compliance whatever you have the power to change that because you are a powerful being and laugh, just laugh. Laugh and laugh. Thank you so much, all of you. That is such fun as always. Hopefully we'll be back in two weeks time, everyone. Everyone all right for two weeks time? Yeah. Well done, David. You you do it well done. A big pat on hopefully, the Hopefully daylight savings will kick in in a few, well, it's going to be a while, isn't it, for you? And then it will be an hour later for me. Yeah. Actually, I will say, because I do Australia a lot, in this, our summertime, your winter time, our, we're closer together in time. So, yeah when yeah. i was living in melbourne there was only about a because it was such a big time difference but with uh with uh the west coast of the us or the you know, north america it was such an enormous time difference but if you really look at it it was only like a five hour time difference because it was a 19 hour time difference but uh yeah yeah and yeah. this goes on to another discussion that we're going to have to have yeah. at some stage because this fits into the oh we all really as far away we are, we are, yeah is it really is it all an illusion but we'll have to leave that for next time thank you so much everyone and to everyone who's listening everyone's links because it will be on all our channels so all of our links will be below the videos as normal and we really really appreciate you taking the time to listen join in and share your energy with us so thank you so much take care everyone bye, bye.